Thanks for tuning in and being part of our online worship community. We here at Webster Gardens are just so glad that you've decided to spend your time worshiping with us today. Maybe you've heard this before. In Matthew chapter 19, Jesus said, With God, all things are possible. And maybe the way things seem to be going in 2020, you're struggling with this verse a little bit. Well, today we're going to talk about how with God, all things are possible. This isn't just a nice idea. This is real. God is real and he can do anything. And you can trust him just like Mary and Joseph did 2,000 years ago, because with him, all things are possible. So right now, we invite you to have a seat, get a cup of coffee, grab your Bible or your Bible app, and join us as we think about what Jesus said in this verse and consider the possibilities. Well, I don't have a kid's message for you today. I don't have any animals. We don't have any field trips. I don't have the Expectomatic 5000. The Expectomatic 5000. Anyway, you're going to have to give the kids' message today. So, why don't you come over here? Come on and sit in this chair right here. Okay, well, use your imagination that you're sitting right there. You're going to have to use your imagination since we're not throwing stuff off a roof or cutting things in half. I want you to imagine something instead. I want you to make a picture in your mind of something that's impossible, something that couldn't happen, like a purple giraffe flying an airplane or something like that. I mean, don't use that example. Use your own example of some impossible thing, but not the purple giraffe flying an airplane. I was just using that as a for instance. So don't think about a purple giraffe flying an airplane. Certainly not with a howler monkey on it. So, do you have something? Oh, you're still thinking about the purple giraffe flying the airplane? And the howler monkey? No, no, stop thinking about that. Think of your own impossible thing. Don't get distracted. Okay, so you're picturing your own impossible... No, 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 stop thinking about that. Okay, all right, you know, scratch that. Let's try this instead. I'm going to give you another impossible thing that I do want you to think about. God becoming a person. God, who created everything and who's bigger than everything, squeezing himself into human form. I mean, look at yourself, your hands, your body. He became a person just like us to be with us in this world. That is as impossible as the purple giraffe flying the airplane. Yes, even with the howler monkey. In fact, those things are more possible. I mean, think about this impossible thing. God becoming a person? Yet that impossible thing happened 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem. It was incredible. God told this young woman named Mary that she was going to have a baby, and that baby is going to be God. She's as surprised as we would be, but she knows something about God, that God can do things that are impossible for us. So Mary hears that news and she says, I'm the Lord's servant. Let it be to me as you have said. And then God sent Jesus. And then Jesus did another impossible thing. And that's to take people like us, people who cheat, people who get impatient with one another, people who lie and pick on each other, people who are greedy. So basically people like all of us and turn us into members of his family. In fact, Jesus' impossible picture of that was that a camel could fit more easily through the eye of a needle than for people like that to be in God's family. But Jesus does the impossible. So anyway, thanks for doing the heavy lifting and using your imagination. And when you see a manger scene this Christmas, I want that to remind you that what's impossible for us is possible for God. I want to introduce you to Maggie. Maggie is a single mom. She works nights in a warehouse making $13 an hour. It takes Maggie an hour to get to work on the bus. And that way, the reason she's working at nights is that she's home for her children during the day as they attend school online. Because Maggie got behind with her utilities, 
They lived in their home without natural gas for all of November. They heated water on their stove for their baths. Meanwhile, someone broke into their home one night. Well, God cares about Maggie. God loves her, just like he loves me. And one of the ways he loves her is by putting you and me into her life. This last summer, we talked a lot about justice and racism. And I reminded you that God's sense of justice is speaking up and caring for those who don't have a voice. So we are speaking up for Maggie and many like Maggie through our partnership and ministry with Bethlehem Lutheran Church in North St. Louis. We connected with Maggie through Bethlehem's Ephrathah Activity Center, where children love to get out of the house and learn Bible stories, pray, and do a craft. That's just one example of what God is doing through you as we bring our offerings to him. God is accomplishing his work, bringing his kindness and his message of Jesus. Continue to be generous so that people here in our region, people in our country, and our world will receive the love of God and the message of God in Jesus Christ. You can bring your offering to the Lord by texting LCWG to 77977. Use our app or go on our website. Or you can mail your offerings to us here at our building on Watson Road. Would you also let us know that you worshiped with us? Please go ahead and complete a communication card. We'd love for you to do that. And to get a communication card sent right to your phone right now, text WG Hello to the number 31996 and you'll receive a link to our communication card. Before Gabriel brought God's message to Mary, she likely anticipated an ordinary life. Gabriel reminded her that with God, nothing will be impossible. That changed everything for Mary. We also are reminded that God can still work the impossible in our ordinary, busy lives. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom... There will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the word of the Lord. Over the past few weeks, we have been looking at expectations. Now, I think most of us would agree that 2020 has not turned out as any of us expected it would be. And so perhaps we find ourselves resonating a little bit with Zechariah and Elizabeth, as we've heard over the last couple of weeks. Zechariah, whose shattered expectations included the fact that he was old and had not had a child, and who then was spoken to by Gabriel, who told him that he would become a father in his old age, which shattered his expectations because he didn't think it was possible. 
We heard how for Elizabeth, his wife, God went beyond her expectations. She had been childless. Now she would have a child who would lead people and guide people to God's chosen one. And today we continue on with that story. You heard a few moments ago, Luke chapter 1, the story of Gabriel coming to visit Mary. Very likely a familiar story for you. Gabriel comes from God to speak to Mary. He tells her, you are going to have a child. And this is not going to be just any child. He is going to be one who is going to be destiny changing for this world. And Mary, you are highly favored of God. For a moment, I want to ask you to take a step back. Back five minutes before Mary had this conversation with Gabriel. And let's think about Mary's expectations before she had this conversation with Gabriel that literally changed everything about her life. What would Mary have been expecting of her life five minutes before Gabriel showed up with this message from God? Well, she was a young lady living in the town of Nazareth. She very likely expected that her betrothal to Joseph would end up with him married. She very likely expected that God would bless their marriage, their union with children. She would raise those children in their faith. She would teach them about God, for it seems that both she and Joseph were very faithful, God-fearing people. It seems likely that she would have expected that as they grew up, her sons would get married, her daughters would be given into marriage, they would begin families of their own. And then eventually Mary likely expected that she would die. She would go to be with her God and she would await that great day of fulfillment when God would make all things new. But then God sends Gabriel with a message for Mary that she is one who is favored of God. And Gabriel speaks in there a message to her expectations. For with God, nothing will be impossible. And that changed everything for Mary. Mary would no longer be a nondescript young lady living in Nazareth, but she would be one who would have a name that would endure forever. A name that will endure until her son returns and then will endure on into eternity. Mary would have a son that she would watch grow up and do amazing things. As she would take her son to the temple to consecrate him, she would also hear some of the expectations that would be coming for her son. Encountering an old Simeon, she would hear him say that there would be a sword that would pierce her soul. An event that she would see some 30 years later. She would see her son hanging on a cross. She would see him die. And then she would see him live again as he would rise from the dead and demonstrate that he had overcome death. All of this would have seemed impossible just a few minutes before that conversation with Gabriel. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Now, after Gabriel had spoken to Mary about this child, and after she knew that she was going to give birth to Jesus, it's very likely that she had some expectations of this child to whom she would give birth. Perhaps she expected that if he was going to be God's chosen one, he would be one who would naturally draw people to himself. Perhaps she expected that he would go off to become a learned rabbi. Maybe she expected that he would become a political person, that he would speak with great authority, that he would be able to draw people and lead people, and that eventually perhaps he would even overthrow the Roman oppressors who were over her people at that time. Mary may have had some of these expectations of her son. But even then in the life of her son, we see that her expectations may not even have been up to what God himself had in mind. Remember the message from Gabriel, with God, nothing will be impossible. 
After all, Mary very likely did not expect that her son would come with her to a wedding and they would run out of wine there and she would ask Jesus, can you do something about this? And he would then change water into wine and not just any wine, but the very best of wine. Nothing will be impossible with God. He would demonstrate this many times throughout his life as he ministered to the people. On one occasion where he shared bread and fish, just a few in number, with thousands of people gathered together on a hillside, where he would show himself to be God's chosen Messiah. As he, people would bring their, their friends to him, bring their family members to him with illnesses, with injuries, and he would heal them for hours and hours on end, showing signs that he was the one that God's spirit was upon as he did great things. Demonstrating this, uh, this again and again, even as he would find himself on a cross, Bearing the weight of all the brokenness of this world. Bearing your brokenness. Bearing my brokenness. And giving his life to God, trusting him fully. As he would cry out, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Because then he would even rise from the dead on the third day and demonstrate that he was the one who came to conquer and to make all things new. He was the one who can give new life to all people. He can cover you even with his goodness. But perhaps that's an expectation that you might say is impossible in your life. You say, maybe God, God, you don't know what all I have done. Maybe you say, God, there's no way you can cover everything that I've done in my life. If you knew what I've done or where I've been, there's no way you could make me new. Your expectation of God may not meet with what God can actually accomplish and wants to accomplish in your life. For with God, nothing will be impossible. The perfect life of Jesus and the complete renewal that God comes to give is given to you. A gift that God seeks to give to you through his son, Jesus. Now you might think also, God, there are lots of areas in my life where I really don't expect that you're going to do a whole lot. We might have expectations thinking that God can't really change a whole lot. Maybe our expectation is that in our family, there's not really a whole lot. It's impossible for God to make a difference and bring faith into my family. And yet, the message from Gabriel continues to remind us, for with God, nothing will be impossible. Now, it might be that you need to start somewhere simple. Maybe it is just once a day, setting aside a time to put a Bible verse or a Bible story in front of your family. Read from the scriptures together and then maybe just say a simple prayer to God asking that he would bless that word that you share with each other. Or perhaps it's choosing a verse that you want your whole family to focus on, writing it on an index card, sticking it to the mirror or somewhere where the whole family will see it, maybe on the refrigerator. And then working together to learn that Bible verse or Bible story. Or perhaps you're thinking with your church family, it's impossible for me to find a way to serve God right now. After all, we're under all these restrictions. Other people are doing all these things. I don't even know what I can do. But perhaps this is where God is calling you to think about someone that you haven't seen for the last six to eight months. Maybe it's to pick up your phone, send them a text message, give them a call, send them an email. Just touch base, find out how they're doing. Talk to them, reacquaint yourself with them. It might be that that is where God is going to use you in their lives in powerful ways so that you can build up and encourage each other. Perhaps you think it's impossible for me to make a difference here in my neighborhood. After all, it's starting to get cold outside. People aren't outside very much. 
But with God, nothing will be impossible. Maybe it starts off with something simple, like putting together a little map of your street. Put a little box there for each of the houses or the apartments that are there. Start by simply thinking of the people's names, writing their names in where their house would be. Think about what their concerns might be. If you've had conversations with them, write those out in the little box. If you don't know what their concerns are, maybe take a little walk. Just look at their houses. See what might be areas of concern for them. And think about how you can connect with them in their needs. Maybe it's just simply writing a card to them, sticking it to their front door, being an encouragement. Maybe it's finding out how you can help them when you see them out. For with God, nothing will be impossible. We've been talking about expectations over the last few weeks. And we see today with Mary's story that with God, even our expectations, as low as they may be or as high as they may be, may still even not be giving God the credit that he needs for what he can do. As the angel Gabriel reminds Mary, for with God, nothing will be impossible. As we consider our expectations going through this Advent season, maybe we need to think about what we can let ourselves do where God can show that with him, nothing really is impossible. All things are possible. May that be your hope this Advent season. In Jesus' name, amen. A significant way that you can reach people with the message of Jesus is by inviting them to Christmas worship. Please, hop on our website, look at our Christmas worship times. You can see them on the slide right now. I want to highlight two of these Christmas worship times for you. On Monday, December 21st, at 6.30 p.m., we're going to have an outdoor Christmas service. This is a worship service that you're going to remember for a long time. Picture this. You are going to be wearing your warm clothing. You have a cup of hot chocolate in your hand. And you're gathering around fire pits. And you're singing your favorite Christmas carols. You're listening to a message about Jesus who is Emmanuel. You know, a lot of people are avoiding coming inside buildings during this coronavirus pandemic. But people can be outside. And we'll keep spatial distancing. But come, invite your friends to join us for our outdoor service on December 21st. Our December 24th service at 2 p.m. will be live in person, but it will also be live streamed. You know that there are many people who aren't worshiping. Send them a link to our website or take a picture of our worship services and text them with that invitation. And if you're going to worship with us through our live stream service on Christmas at 2 p.m., please sign into YouTube. And then welcome and engage other worshipers by making comments. Please do that. We want to point people to Jesus. Do you ever limit what God can do? I do. Let's be honest about that. Let's pray to God. Would you please join me? God, I've often set my expectations of you too low. I expect you to keep your distance while you're with me all the time. I don't expect you to make a difference in my life or in my family's life. I don't expect you to make a difference in my neighborhood and community. You say that nothing is impossible with you, and I doubt that. Forgive me. Teach me your ways. Make me new. God does the impossible. There is nothing he cannot do. He forgives the guilty. He rescues the lost. He defeats death. And he does all of that through Jesus. And he does all of that through you. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye.
Jesus' friend Peter shared the message how God can do the impossible in Jesus Christ. Would you join me as we say these words together? Grace and peace be yours in abundance. So now in your hearts, set apart Jesus as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer for the hope that you have. Thanks again for joining us in worship. We here at Webster Gardens hope that you were emboldened and encouraged in your faith today. With God, all things are possible. If you enjoyed your online worship experience with us, or if you found it to be valuable in some way, we would ask that you would share the link with somebody who you know so that they could get a little value out of it too. We also want to encourage you to click the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that some other people might come across these videos as well. And we'll see you next time.